Dr. Uh, Hadi Khan's uh, wonderful introductions concerning uh, Bob's teaching on the responsibility of Muslim communities and the way he tried to awaken them. Let me quote in Bob what he expected of us, the Muslim communities, all of them. He says, I would very much um, like to apologize that I don't want to, uh, I can't come on that level of uh, Urdu speakers, so I um, have to hear two things uh, in a language which is Pakistan's actually official language, so I hope to be more mind. As some of you know, that my whole political struggle and work has been to fight for the equal rights, opportunities, and responsibilities for various ethnic and religious minorities, both in Europe and Myanmar, but also in the last 10, 12 years in the European Union. But for the last few years, I have also realized that struggle against racism and ethnic inequality also includes struggle against discrimination, which is on behalf of, or on, on because of your religious affiliation. So I have been also working on the issue of Islamophobia for the last few years in the European Union. Day before yesterday, I was in Strasbourg, uh, where we presented a project that was called The New Europe. The project was presented in the European Parliament and the reason was that for the last 60 years Europe has moved from being a very democratic, human rights loving and inclusive society to a very exclusive society, a society which does not feel that the Muslim communities are a part of Europe even then that they have lived here since the 8th century. And we thought, uh, some of the people who work with uh, ethnic equality, we thought that as long as Europe does not work to come back to those wonderful values Europe is so famous for, it will be going in a very wrong direction. So the idea, of course, is to raise awareness among European politicians, decision makers and also public and the media that Muslim communities are an integral part of Europe and excluding them will be actually excluding one fourth of the whole humanity. Now, of course, as you know that not all Muslims live their lives in a uniform fashion or think collectively as we very proudly always say Muslims do that, Muslims do that, but they don't. And when we talk about Muslims, there is a lot of responsibility put on our shoulders. There I would call it a collective responsibility. Because if we want Europeans and the West to respect us as Muslims, so it's also very important that we also respect the other part. And since I do not like to judge people, I would like to share with you certain points and certain, certain uh, practical steps which an individual person with a Muslim background and also Muslim communities collectively maybe can do so that we do not give the Europeans that excuse that we don't belong here, that European continent is a Christian continent, it is for the white people, it is for blonde and blue, but it is an inclusive continent. Now, with your permission, I would just like very quickly to go through very practical steps which we can use. And again, our younger generation is very used to that. Elder generation never made any effort, but we are actually not going forward, but we are going backward. And I think that the most important thing which our communities can do, our Muslim communities, that educate yourself. We live in Denmark, we live in the UK, we live in Holland, where education is totally free. You can educate yourself 
from primary school to, to PhD, you can have evening classes. But many Muslim communities I talk to in different European countries never involve themselves or educate themselves. They educate themselves with the poetry of Morocco or with history of Morocco or Pakistan or Indonesia, but they never bother to look around themselves and see what is happening around them. And that is one thing I think which is a very sad thing. And education is not only for getting degrees and getting a job as an engineer, but education is also to broaden one's horizon. And that I think we are lacking. The second thing is that we have to accept, as Muslim communities, we have to accept the law and the constitution of the land we are living in. And do not try to force the laws of our of the tradition of the countries we come from. And that is a very, very important thing when we live in the country. And then, of course, on an individual level, we can create a beautiful, friendly neighbor, neighborhood with people we live together. I have seen many times that our people will make wonderful dishes, smells and tastes wonderful, but we never bother to knock at our neighbor's home and say, hey, look, here is a wonderful Pakistani dish, taste this. And believe me, just this simple gesture can open doors for you to the rest of your life. And we don't do that. And coming back to our religion and tradition, Islam is supposed to be a religion of peace. But look around and see how peacefully we practice our religion. We don't. And when we talk about our religion, we should not only consider ourselves as only Muslims. Our identity is not only Muslim. Our identity is a beautiful human being to start that we are insan first, not Muslim first. But now there is a fashion among all Muslims in Europe. They start talking about their identity as Muslim first, and then anything else. And of course, the local communities say, hey, if you want to have a Muslim community, then go to a Muslim country. And I, I cannot argue against that idea. And identity, nobody is going to take it away from you, but it should be also inclusive if we want to have an inclusive identity. And then, among Muslim communities, I have seen we have many, many prejudices against Jews, against Jewish people, against anybody who is not Muslim. And if we want that the Europeans, the Jewish community, the Christians and others have to accept us equal, we got to accept them also equal. And we have to work with our own prejudices if we want that others will not have prejudices against us. We talk a lot about Islamophobia. But how many Muslims talk about Jewish prejudices among us? We don't. Even Jews and Christians are al kitab They are people of the book. But we look at the way we talk about them. And on an individual level, I think that one thing which I, I really miss is that Muslim individuals, both educated and the elderly generation which came here as, as workers, never are very seldom take part in media debates, in what is happening in the society, in political world. When you talk to Pakistanis, they always talk about President Zardari, they never talk about Haley Thorne Schmidt. Or they will talk about what is happening in, in Saudi Arabia, but they will never look around what is happening in their own little neighborhood. From individual, but then we also have a collective responsibility. If we think that we are part of a concept called Uma, then we can discuss it. But let's say that there is a concept called Uma, then it means that Muslim communities in Europe where we live have to also create social cohesion among themselves. How many of you with a Pakistani background know anybody with a Turkish background, a Turkish politician, or Moroccans, or Iranian? Very few. If we want to talk about Uma, so let's know our people who we are. The second thing collectively I think is that we need as a community or as communities to build bridges in the country we live in. We cannot live in a country and live in a comfort zone. I have my family, I have my children, I have a bank balance in Pakistan also here. I have a wonderful job and I pray a couple of times a day and I'm happy. This comfort zone has done a lot of damage to us. If we do not get out of that comfort zone 
and become a little bit comfortable with a neighbor, then that comfort zone becomes uncomfortable. And I think it's very, very important that we broaden that comfort zone, which includes not only your family, but your neighbor, your friends, your colleagues, and everybody. Many of us, we have a good job. When we finish job, we go back to our own communities. We never actually interact with the communities we, we have jobs. And then I think there is another thing which I need that we should not wait, the Muslim community should not wait others to do things for you. We should not wait that our, our situation will change. We have to be proactive. We have to take things in our own hand if we wish that our problem will be solved. Nobody is going to solve your problem. I travel a lot in Europe and talk to politicians, talk to NGOs, believe me. And this is my prejudice, that the European continent is not interested in having you here. They will rather see your back than see your face. But we can make them change their opinion. If we don't make an effort, then they will be more than happy that the elder generation will die, the younger generation will become more and more European, and their generation will be totally assimilated. If that is what we want, if we don't want that, then we have to take things in our hands. And last but not least, I think that our religion, religion of Islam, is a wonderful, peaceful religion. But there are some black sheep among us who really commit extremism, terrorism, and they do things on the name of Islam. And how many of us say to them, don't do that, or go to media and say, this people who are doing that, they are not Muslims in our eyes. They are doing that against Islam. So we, and especially our religious communities, our Imams and our people who actually have taken monopoly to represent Islam in the media, <coughs> they only represent 10-12% of Muslims. 85% Muslims actually should be involved in NGOs, work politically, work socially, so that Danes and British and that people do not look at us only people who pray and don't do anything. They beat up their wives, they oppress their daughters, that's what all Muslims do. And this we got to change and we got to change it now if we want that our life gets better in the European continent. Thank you very much.